Hello guys, I'm Lila and I'm only an 18 year old girl. No, I'm not married and this is not a story about my mother-in-law or something, but this is a story about my grandma Harriet who was a nightmare mother-in-law to my mom, Elsie. Why am I telling this story? Because she tried to use me to separate my parents. Harriet is my dad, Gabriel's mother. She is a super psycho woman who has made my mom's life a living hell. She used to live with my parents until my dad was forced to kick her out. I didn't even see her until I was 12. They simply didn't trust her around me. Why? Well, she tried to convince my dad that I wasn't his child, that mom cheated and baby trapped him with someone else's child. When I was a little over 12 years old, I started to become interested in meeting Harriet. She had gotten in contact with me in some way and was pestering me for regular visits. A lot of my friends had good relationships with their grandparents and I wanted that as well. Mom's parents were long dead, so there was only Harriet left. I begged my parents to have a relationship with Harriet. I said... Mom, Dad, please let me have a relationship with Grandma. I want to see if we can have a good relationship. Most of my friends have grandparents. I feel left out. Lila, it's not that easy, dear. Harriet has already hurt us in more ways than one. You already know why we have limited contact with her. You do realize that she tried to take your dad away from me and you. I know that, Mom. You guys have already told me everything. Look, I know she has been horrible to you, but she has changed. She has even apologized for the incident. She has only apologized to you, Lila. Mom should have apologized to Elsie first. She still hates your mom, dear. Even after I give her so much money, she insults Elsie and tells me to leave her. I'm afraid she is trying to manipulate you. I don't think you should have a relationship with her. I begged and pleaded with my parents for days. In the end, my mom felt guilty for coming between me and my grandma. Meanwhile, Harriet was pestering dad and trying to make him feel guilty for keeping me away. So my parents were kind of forced to let us keep in contact. After that, I used to frequently hang out with her. She was attentive to me and I felt like I finally knew about my grandparents' love. I did love her too, but still managed to notice some red flags about her. When my mom went to drop me off at Harriet's house, they had a small conversation. I was already inside the house when they talked, but I could very clearly hear their conversations. Mom said, Harriet, I understand that we have our differences, but let's not make Lila suffer for that. I know that my daughter wants to stay connected to you, so I have allowed this to happen. Please don't do anything to break our trust. You must be so pissed, Elsie. You can see that I am starting to win. I already took away your daughter. I will take away Gabriel as well. Once I have them both, you will lose. I know you are still planning to send me away from your lives. But hear this out, Harriet. Gabriel will never leave me for you. And we won't let you get off easy if you try to use my daughter against us. We will see just how loyal your daughter will be to you. Time will tell. Consider this a little warning. Saying this, Harriet just closed the door in my mom's face. I was stunned but kept my mouth shut. I slowly went to the living room and pretended not to hear anything. I didn't speak up, guys. I know it was wrong. I thought Harriet loved me and I didn't want to lose her, so I never told Dad about the conversation and neither did Mom. Harriet never stopped showing her hatred towards Mom. Grandma used to berate Mom in front of me when I was with her. She always said... Your mother is a useless woman, Lila. I'm glad you didn't turn out to be like her. She took your dad away from me. I will never forgive her. 
Grandma, Mom is not like that. Dad still visits you and takes care of you. Mom never stopped him. My son would never abandon me. Your mom has used some dirty tricks to make him stay away, but this time she will pay. I will have my son back. Grandma, I don't like you talking about mom like that. What happened was between you three. She is a good mom to me, so please don't say these things to me. Harriet never stopped, even after I repeatedly told her to. She continued to demonize my mom and try to make me agree with her. She even said that I, she and dad, would be very happy without my mom in the picture. For years, I listened to her berate my mom. I was young and dumb and didn't want to lose my grandma, so I never revealed those conversations to anyone. I tried to defend my mom but was scared that grandma would hate me. The stupid girl I was, I continued to fawn over my grandma until I was 18. A single incident and it all came crashing down. It would destroy my relationship with Harriet for good. One day, when I was visiting grandma, I made the mistake of venting about my college education. I was nervous to ask my parents for help but also dreaded student loans at the same time. I didn't want to stress my parents, so I decided to vent to Grandma instead. I said, Grandma, I will have to apply to college pretty soon. I have no idea how I will manage to arrange the money for my college fund. I'm scared to ask my parents. I hope I land a good scholarship with my grades. You know what, Lila? I'm thinking about paying for your college. Really, Grandma? You would do that for me? But where will you get the money? I have a lot of money saved from your father's allowance. He does send me a lot of money. I'll give you all of it. But you need to do something for me. You have to make Gabriel divorce Elsie. What are you talking about, Grandma? Do you want me to make my parents divorce each other? Are you serious? I am dead serious, girl. If you do it, I will give you money for college, a total of $13,000. All for you. I even have a plan ready. You just have to agree to it. You are going to pay me to make my parents get a divorce? You have to be kidding me. This can't be real. I will give you half of my money right now. You can have the rest later. I just need your word that you will do your best to make it happen. I didn't think she was serious. I mean, it had to be a joke. Honestly speaking, I have heard stories about this happening, but I never thought they could get real. Hell, I didn't think Harriet was capable of it. Boy, was I wrong. Sitting in my account was $65,000 that Harriet sent me the next day. I was dumbstruck by the freaking audacity of Harriet. Right then, I received a call from her. Thankfully, I decided to record the call. She said, So, I think you have already received the half I promised. I have more, you know. You will get another 65000 if you agree to my conditions. Once your mother is out of the picture, I will convince Gabriel to give you some more. His money will be my money anyway. That way, we will continue profiting from each other. Fine then, I will do it. But it will be difficult to convince Dad to divorce Mom. He does love her a lot. I know that, girl. Your witch of a mom had the power to take him away from me. I will never forget that. Now we will see who wins. Don't worry. I'll hire someone to play her affair partner. You just have to show Gabriel some screenshots and pictures. Wait, you will hire someone to be my mom's affair partner? She'll never do something wrong. I can guarantee you that. Pictures can be edited, Lila. It won't be very difficult. Money can make people do things. If you don't want to join me, I will think of something else. No, that's fine. I'll do it. You're giving me a lot of money anyway. After that, Harriet told me about her grand plan and revealed everything to me. Her poor health, 
Yeah, she faked a heart attack. She had been setting this up for months. Harriet had everything lined up down to the fine details. She only needed to reveal the affair and convince Dad to divorce Mom. If I hadn't agreed, I would have never found out about her schemes. So I joined hands with her. But Harriet had no idea what was coming. For weeks. I met with the hired guy to arrange all the details. Harriet was adamant that nothing could go wrong. I was clever enough to take pictures and recordings of all interactions. Harriet didn't know because, well, I do know ways to fool her. I collected all the evidence and went straight to my parents. I sat them down and said, "Mom, Dad, there's something I need to tell you guys. It's about Grandma." What is it, Lila? Is she sick again? Tell me now. I'm getting worried. No, Dad, she's not sick. She never actually has been sick. She's faking everything. What? How can you accuse your grandma of such things? This is ridiculous. Stop being mad at Lila, Gabriel. Your mother had pulled this shit before. Why are you even surprised? Lila, tell us everything. She wanted to get back into our lives, so she faked a heart attack. She accepted it herself, and she just paid me a lot of money to make you two get a divorce. My parents looked shocked by what I said. I could see why they were so taken aback by it. I had just dropped two nuclear bombs on them. They were silent for a while and looked at each other. Then I went ahead and explained everything to them. I also gave them the proof I had. By the time I was done, both of my parents were super pissed. Mom said, "What the freaking hell? This stupid woman is still after me. After all these years, she has not given up. This is ridiculous. She's out for my reputation and my marriage." I had no idea my mom was capable of this shit. I shouldn't have let her back into our lives. Hell, I took care of her for years, and now she does this to me and Elsie. She had been planning everything for a while, Dad. I couldn't record all of her conversations. You saw the texts and what they said. She's adamant that she wants Mom out of the picture. Gabriel, your mom tried to weaponize my child against me. Harriet is a freaking witch. All these acts of being a loving grandparent were just for show. She only wanted to use me for her plans. I can see that now. I wanted to let you guys know so that she can't create any misunderstanding with or without me. Thank you for telling us, Lila. Don't worry. We won't let her use you against us, and there is no way we're getting a divorce. Whatever Mom has in mind won't work. You don't have to worry about it. My parents told me to act like everything is fine, so I let Harriet transfer me the proof that she had manufactured about my mom's cheating. Dad and Mom looked over everything and made their plans with me. Then we waited for their anniversary to come. Harriet was excited because I told her that Dad was getting ready to file for divorce. I said, "Hey, Grandma, you know what? Your plan worked." I showed Dad all the proof and convinced him to divorce Mom. Dad is talking to a lawyer. He would be serving her papers on their anniversary. He's having a smaller party so that he doesn't spend too much on Mom. Mom doesn't know a thing. Oh my God, that is wonderful news, Lila. I knew keeping you around would be worth it. You are such a good girl. I'll send over the rest of the money today. Good job, kid. Thank you, Grandma. You might want to come and invite some friends to watch the show. It'll be amazing. Dad won't mind having a few of your friends over. Harriet gleefully hung up on me and started to call her friends. She asked Dad if she could invite them, and he said yes. Harriet even sent me the rest of the money later. Me, Mom, and Dad were all pretty surprised by her stupidity. She thought she was clever, but she had no idea who she was up against. We were going to end her drama once and for all. My parents' anniversary was supposed to be a grand celebration. Instead, they opted for a small one this year. 
I convinced Harriet that Dad planned a small party to save money. She took that as the truth. The truth was that Dad didn't want his entire friend circle to see the drama. Instead, he called our extended family and Harriet's friends, people who needed to know what a snake Harriet was. When everyone arrived, I got everyone's attention to give a speech. I stood up and said, Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to my parents' anniversary. I'm so happy to have such wonderful parents and thought I should speak some words about them. You know how much parents are still in love? It just makes my heart melt, but there has been someone who has a problem with their love and marriage. As you all know, it's none other than my dear Grandma Harriet. What are you saying, Lila? Why would you say things like that about your grandma? Guys, are you wondering why I would say something like that? Well, Harriet here had tried to bribe me into making my dad divorce my mom. Yes, that's completely true. She promised me money for college if I make my dad divorce my mom. She even sent me in advance to lure me into her plans. Gabriel, look at what your worthless daughter is saying. Guys, this is all her and Elsie's plan. They want me out of your life, so they're using dirty tricks now. You shouldn't believe them. But I have proof, Harriet. I have both your blood and mom's. I know exactly how to deal with people who want to take advantage of me. Guys, you would be shocked to see what grandma had arranged. Do you want to see what it was? Here it is. I quickly started to play our recorded calls quite loudly on the little microphone I got. Yes, the ones that they use for ASMRs. When I played the whole recording, the look on people's faces was glorious. My parents, of course, didn't react because they knew. Meanwhile, Harriet was slowly getting pale and started to sweat. I could see that her hands were shaking. Everyone in the family and even her friends were giving her nasty looks. When the recording ended, she said, These are all fake. You and Elsie are trying to trap me and ruin my reputation. You two hate me and want me gone. Don't put your wildest dreams on me and my daughter, Harriet. Everything you have said is exactly what you wanted to do to me. We have more proof, including the guy you hired to play my affair partner. You have stooped low, Harriet. Even I am embarrassed for you. Gabriel, why are you not saying anything? You can't just let your daughter and wife insult me like that. Say something, son, please. I don't know what to say, mom. I'm ashamed to call you my mom. For years, I ignored my wife's feelings and kept in touch with you. I took over all your responsibility. And now, this is how you reward me? You can't believe their lies, Gabriel. I know how much you love Elsie. Why would I do this to you? Exactly, Mom. You knew how much I love Elsie, but you never wanted her around. You wanted to have sole control over me and my money. You have tried to break us up before. I can't believe you tried to use Lila for your gains. I have done enough for you, but no more. From today onwards, we will go no contact with you, and I am going to stop paying for everything. You can go figure out your life yourself. I'm going to protect my wife and daughter from your toxic behavior. Harriet heard this and started to bawl in front of everyone. No one reached out to help her or comfort her. They didn't want to be near her. Everyone sympathizes with us while criticizing Harriet. Even people on Harriet's side didn't support her. It was glorious, actually. Harriet sobbed and begged for forgiveness while everyone else just ignored her. After a while, Dad told her to get out of our property before he called the police. That made her leave out of fear. We apologized to our guests for making them witness everything. However, they understood our situation and were glad to know how toxic Harriet can be. We later invited them to a bigger party that was happening within a few hours in a different venue. Overall, my parents had a great time and so did I. Harriet kept blowing up our phones, but we didn't care. 
Her texts to me range from anger at exposing her to begging to make dad forgive her. I ignored her and went about my way. The real fun happened the next day when grandma asked for the money back. Harriet said, Since you've decided to betray me, I have no use for you anymore. Don't even think about coming near my house again. Don't worry, Harriet. In this life, I will never make the stupid decision of being around you again. You don't have to worry about that. And I want my money back. I don't care how you go to college. You are no one to me. You need to give me back the money I sent. What money? What you gave me was a gift. I already gave it away to charity. I did that the very next day. As for my college, my parents already have a fund saved for me. You lied to me to make me do your dirty work. I know the truth now. What the hell? I will sue you for the money. Just wait and watch. Sure, Harriet. I would love to see how you win this case. This will be hilarious. Go ahead and do your best. But remember, Dad won't be supporting you financially anymore. You better check your finances before hiring a lawyer. Harriet started to call me some colorful names before I hung up on her. She kept calling me, but I blocked her number. Harriet tried her best to make Dad speak to her again. She refused to apologize for her behavior and only acted in an entitled way. So my dad and mom blocked her as well. Dad was adamant about not supporting Harriet anymore. Surprisingly, even the extended family understood the situation and agreed with his decision. Harriet did show up to the house to scream at mom and me. But dad called the police on her, who came and warned her away. Now, Harriet was forced to move near her older sister who was making her work at a grocery store. The sister gives us information about her because she is on our side. Meanwhile, my parents are finally living a peaceful life without the constant fights about Harriet. I have got accepted into a great university on a full scholarship. Life is good, and I can tell everyone the hilarious story about my grandma. Hi there, I'm Tawny, and I'm 23, she, her. Let me tell you about my complicated relationship with my dad, Ivan. So I have some serious daddy issues. I mean, who doesn't? This is, of course, due to the toxic behavior of my dad because he wasn't exactly the best father figure. As far back as I can remember, it was like our household was constantly walking on eggshells. My mom, Betty, and I had to endure emotional and verbal abuse from him, and it was just so messed up. I don't know why he was so awful back then, but as I grew up, I couldn't help but resent him more and more. I mean, come on. A daughter should feel safe and loved around her dad, right? But instead, I found myself rebelling against him. I'd argue with him even when my mom, who is the sweetest person you'll ever meet, couldn't say a word to him. Our arguments would escalate into screaming matches, and it got so bad that our neighbors started calling the police on us several times. Can you imagine how toxic that was? It was like living in a war zone. I just couldn't stand how he treated us and how he made my mom cry all the time. As I got older, I became more vocal about my feelings and called him out on his behavior. But it was like talking to a brick wall. He never listened or tried to change. It was frustrating and heartbreaking at the same time. I remember the first real time I stood up to him. I was only 12. Dad... I can't take this anymore. The way you treat us is just so wrong. What are you talking about, Tawny? I provide for this family and this is how you talk to me? It's not just about providing for us, Dad. You're always yelling at Mom and me for no reason. You call us names and make us feel worthless. Tawny, please don't argue with your father. Let's just calm down. No, Mom, I won't stay quiet anymore. He can't treat us like this. Oh, listen to Miss Perfect here, acting like she knows it all. 
You don't seem to understand that we have to treat each other with respect and kindness. I never claim to be perfect. Tony, please, let's not fight. Mom, you deserve better. We both do. You shouldn't have to put up with his constant anger and criticism. You think you know everything, huh? You're just a kid. I may be a kid, but that doesn't mean I can't see what's happening. You've been hurting us for years and it's not right. Tawny, please stop. Let's just try to get along. No, Mom. I won't stay silent anymore. We need to stand up for ourselves. You will not talk back to me like that. I won't be silenced. We deserve to be treated with love and respect, not fear. That's it. Go to your room now. Fine, but I won't back down. We need to change, Dad, or I won't be a part of this toxic environment anymore. Despite all the pain and anger, there was still a part of me that yearned for a loving and supportive father figure. I wanted to have those special daddy-daughter moments that I saw in movies or with my friends. But with Ivan, it felt like an impossible dream. I remember another time when he punched me. I was 14. Dad, is that you? Are you drunk again? It's the middle of the night. Don't you have work tomorrow? Mind your own business, brat. I don't need you watching over me. Watching over you? I'm worried sick about you. Do you even realize how your drinking affects our family? Oh, here we go again. The little princess thinks she's so much better than me. It's not about being better, Dad. It's about you putting yourself in danger and hurting us in the process. Mom's always terrified when you come home like this. Mom's always terrified. Wow, poor Mommy. Terrified, huh? She's a grown woman. She can handle herself. It's you I gotta take care of. You're missing the point. She shouldn't have to handle this. It's funny, you know, how I have to take care of a grown man because he's just a man-child. Watch your tone, young lady. You don't know anything about life. I may not know everything, but I know this isn't right. You're hurting yourself and hurting us too. You think you can lecture me, huh? You're just a spoiled brat. I'm not a spoiled brat, Dad. I'm your daughter and I deserve to have a father who cares about us and doesn't put us through this pain. You better watch yourself or you'll regret it. I won't back down, Dad. You need help and I won't stop until you get it. We all need a better life than this. That's when he lunged forward and punched me square in the face. I immediately felt the blood pouring out of my nose. Even though I was in pain... I stood my ground. Just go away, Tawny. You don't understand anything. No, Dad, you don't understand. You're not alone in this, but you need to face your problems instead of drowning them in alcohol. You're sick and you need help. Big yikes, am I right? Well, unfortunately, this was the norm for our family. And it sucked big time. I felt like I had to grow up quickly, which no child should do. But one day, everything changed. It was a random Sunday afternoon when I was 15 and my mom and I were playing cards on the kitchen table. Out of nowhere, there was Ivan, my father, looking all distraught, holding a duffel bag in his hand. Honestly, I didn't feel any sympathy for him at that point. I pretty much hated him by then. I didn't even call him dad anymore, it was just Ivan. He seemed sad when he spoke, saying he had to go on a trip. I couldn't help but spit out something spiteful, telling him I didn't care where he was going, but of course, he ignored me. Mom asked when he'd be back, worried about the rent that was due soon. Ivan said he'd be back by the end of the week, but that was the last time we saw him. A week passed, then two weeks, and still no sign of him. 
The rent was due, but he wasn't answering any calls. Mom, my grandma Harper, and my granddad Frank tried everything to reach him, but nothing worked. Two weeks turned into a month, then two months, six months, and then a whole year, and still no sign of Ivan. Mom cried a lot during that time, struggling to pay rent on her own. I felt so bad, and I hated his guts even more because of what he was doing to my poor mother. We got kicked out of our place eventually, my childhood home, and since Mom didn't have any parents, Grandma Harper and Granddad Frank were kind enough to let us stay with them. Thank God for that. Am I right? At the beginning of Ivan's disappearance, my mom filed a missing persons report, but Ivan was never found. Everyone assumed he was dead, and we even had a little funeral for him, even though there was nothing to bury. It was tough for everyone, and even I found myself crying sometimes. Eight years had passed since he was last seen, and life went on without him. Eight freaking years, y'all! Life had been a roller coaster ride during that time, but you know what was amazing? My mom, Betty, finally got her groove back. It was like she was blossoming without that deadbeat dad dragging her down. After my dad disappeared, it was tough at first. My mom still held on to the hope that he was alive somewhere out there. But even if she was right, we eventually had to accept the reality that he might never come back. It was hard, especially for my mom. But slowly, we picked up the pieces and moved on. She threw herself into work and started focusing on building a better life for us. She worked tirelessly to make ends meet, and I admired her resilience. She refused to let his absence define us. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy for her, but she kept pushing forward. It took some time, but she found her joy again. She started making new friends and rediscovering old hobbies. I could see her smile more often. And that made my heart happy. I was just a kid back then, but I knew she deserved all the happiness in the world. But then, life sucker punched us again. After eight years of being without Ivan, we lost Granddad Frank, my grandma's rock, in a terrible car accident. It was like a nightmare, and we couldn't believe he was gone. That drunk driver turned our lives upside down, and we were left grappling with the pain and emptiness. Grandma Harper, well, she was hit the hardest, losing her son and her husband within such a short time. It felt like her world shattered. She was like a broken puzzle, and we didn't know how to put her back together. Mom and I tried our best to be there for her, but grief is a beast that's tough to tame. In those dark days. All we had was each other. Anyone who's organized a funeral, especially on a budget, will tell you it's a whole roller coaster of emotions. We were all dealing with Granddad Frank's funeral, trying to get everything organized while struggling with our grief. It was tough, but thank goodness for the community who stepped in to help us through it all. So picture this. The funeral was underway, and we were trying our best to keep it together. You know, be strong for Mom and Grandma Harper. But then, out of nowhere, it was like I saw a ghost. Seriously, my heart stopped for a second. There, coming towards us, was none other than my long-lost, supposedly dead dad, Ivan. I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, it had been years since he vanished, and everyone assumed he was gone for good. But no, there he was, looking like a complete wreck. I honestly didn't think it was him at first. I thought it was a homeless person who maybe lost his way, but nope, it was Ivan. It was shocking to see him like that, so thin with a dirty beard and yellow teeth. It was like looking at a total stranger. My emotions were all over the place, and before I knew it, a scream escaped from my lips. I couldn't help it, you know. It was like all those years of hurt and anger just erupted at once. And guess what? My mom and grandma saw him too, and they were just as shocked as I was. Well, let me tell you, that sight was too much for my poor mom to handle. 
She fainted from the shock and I had to jump into action trying to revive her. It was all so overwhelming. Thankfully, Grandma Harper stepped in and started fanning her, but I was left standing there, facing my dad after all those years. It was almost like I went into autopilot, though, having to be tough and stoic, just like all those years ago. I could feel the anger and confusion bubbling inside me, but I knew I had to stay strong for the sake of my family, so I took a deep breath, squared my shoulders, and walked up to him. It was like a mix of relief and anxiety washed over me. Part of me wanted to run away, but I knew I had to face him, confront him about everything. Oh, it was such a mess. I couldn't believe my eyes, and all those emotions were just bubbling inside me. I took a deep breath, and with a trembling voice, I demanded answers from him. I mean, he disappeared for eight freaking years, and now he suddenly shows up out of the blue? Like, what the hell happened? But of course, he had to be all mysterious about it. He said it was hard to explain why he was gone for so long. Hard to explain? Seriously? I was so fed up with his games. I pushed him, yelling at him, trying to get some kind of response out of him. But all he did was shrug me off and act all aloof. And you know what he said? He dared to tell me that he didn't owe me any explanation. After everything he put us through, he didn't feel like talking to me because we hated each other. Like, come on, that's not an excuse. I wasn't about to let him talk to mom and grandma without spilling some answers first. I told him he couldn't just waltz in and act like everything was okay. But he just brushed me off and said he was there for the funeral. As if that was all he needed to say. Ivan completely disrespected our boundaries and pranced on down to where the funeral was being held. And that's when I saw that my mom was thankfully awake again. She was sitting up on the grass, drinking water and being fanned by Grandma Harper. Things were getting tense and the crowd of people at the funeral started whispering and looking at us. I was so embarrassed, but I tried to keep them at bay, asking them to give us some space to deal with our family drama. Thankfully, they all dispersed with a distant cousin of ours directing them to Grandma Harper's place so that they could have some refreshments. Mom, who was always the sweetest and kindest person, looked at Ivan like she wanted to murder him. I had never seen her like that before. The tension was so thick, you could cut it with a knife. Mom looked at him, her eyes full of anger and sadness, all at once. She said, It would have been better if you didn't come. Why are you here? And you know what he said? He had the nerve to claim he heard about Grandad's passing and wanted to pay his respects. Like seriously, after all this time, that's the best excuse he could come up with? Mom wasn't having any of it though. She saw right through his BS and called him out on it. You know that's not true. If you cared, you would have come home eight years ago like you promised. Hell. You could have come home literally any time before now. What the hell is wrong with you? She didn't hold back. And honestly, I was so proud of her for standing up to him. But Ivan was a mess, stammering all over his words and fidgeting like crazy. It was like he couldn't stand still. And then I noticed something off about him. He was scratching himself like crazy and his eyes seemed all distant. It hit me that he might be on drugs or something. Without hesitation, Mom asked what we were all thinking. Are you high right now? She wasn't holding back any punches, that's for sure. Ivan tried to come up with some explanations, saying a lot had happened in the past eight years and that he got mixed up with the wrong crowd, but he assured us he was doing better now. What a load of crap. Mom chuckled bitterly and then just broke down sobbing. I wanted to hug her and tell her everything would be okay, but I was so angry at Ivan. I couldn't help myself. I started yelling at him, telling him to go back to wherever he came from because no one wanted him there. But he was trying to ignore me like he always did, 
but I wasn't about to let him off the hook that easily. I kept on yelling, and it seemed like I was impossible to ignore because of how loud and angry I was. Get out of here! You have no right to be here! Let Grandad rest in peace for God's sake! Why are you making such a big deal out of this? Because you abandoned us. You left us to struggle to deal with everything on our own. And now you dare to show up here like you're some kind of hero? You're a joke, Ivan. I had my reasons. Reasons? What reasons could justify leaving your family behind like that? We needed you, Dad. But you were too wrapped up in your messed up world to care about us. I don't have time to deal with you, kid. Step aside. Mom, Mom, look at me. Grandma Harper had been quiet this whole time. She had a blank stare and was looking off into the distance, furrowing her brows now and then. I placed my hand on her shoulder to comfort her, and she responded by sighing and leaning in, as if she was snapped back into reality. He's here for the inheritance. Mom, please look at me. Ivan, you are the scum of the earth, you know that? You're worse than the sewage. Mom, please. Tawny, please tell this man that I want nothing to do with him. I have nothing to say to him. Ooh, burn. Even his mother didn't want to claim him. I just need to get my inheritance and then leave. Those friends I told you about, well, turns out I owe them some money and... That's none of our concerns, sir. Please leave. We are grieving. Come on, Mom. You're gonna act like you don't know me? Seriously? I don't know who you are. Please leave before we call the police. Mom, it's me, Ivan, your son. I don't have a son. My son died eight years ago. I don't know who you are. I'm not messing around, Mom. And we're not messing around either, you bozo. Get away from this place. I'm not talking to you. But I'm talking to you. All my life you've ignored me. And now you're getting a taste of your own medicine. Shut up. Mom. 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 These people don't play around, okay? Just give me the money and I'll come back, I promise. I'll explain everything, okay? I'll explain everything to all of you. Just please give me the money. I need the money. I need the money, goddammit. I need the money. Give me the money. We all just stood there looking at him with blank expressions on our faces. Ivan's pleas were getting more desperate and louder, but it was falling on deaf ears. He even dropped to his knees in front of Grandma Harper, begging her to listen, but we didn't pay attention to his cries. I need the money, he kept repeating, as if that was supposed to justify everything he put us through. But after all those years of abandonment, his words meant nothing to me. I was done listening to his excuses. I grabbed a shovel that was nearby and I whacked him in the head with it. He was knocked out cold. Thank you for that. No problem. His cries were getting on my nerves. You want to know the funny thing? Since he got here, he hasn't even taken one look at his father's grave. I don't know what happened to him, but he looks awful. Now the outside is reflecting the inside. Do you think that these friends of his are going to kill him if he doesn't get their money? Probably. I mean, if he's doing drugs, he must be doing some other crazy crap that would get him killed. Do you think we should give him the money? Why don't we ask Grandad? Hey, Grandad, should we give Ivan the money? Say nothing if the answer is no. My mom and grandma amused me and we all intently listened for Grandad's answer. Of course, there was silence. Well, looks like we got our answer. What a sad and pathetic man. I'm glad Frank isn't here to see this. Let's go, you guys. 
We'll find a police officer who's patrolling the area and tell them of the hobo who was near the grave. And with that, we left Ivan there and proceeded with the funeral in our home. I don't know what happened to my dad after that, but I never saw him again. I'm sure he's dead, though, for real this time. Hi, I'm Kat, and I'm 25 years old. I just got married to my boyfriend of two years, Nate. We met at Walmart and bonded over some mac and cheese. He asked for my number and I obviously said yes because who could say no to that cute face. It was a very random place where we met, but as we started talking more and going on dates, we totally fell in love. We realized how compatible we were with each other and then Nate proposed. It was not some fancy proposal, but it was the sweetest and I couldn't have said no. We were making a grocery run at the same Walmart and he said he wanted to get some mac and cheese. When we were at the mac and cheese aisle, I turned around and there was Nate on his knee with a ring in his hand. I obviously said yes. The wedding couldn't go as dreamy as the proposal went. Unfortunately, because my very own sister Clarissa was hell bent on ruining the day for me. Let me share a bit more about Clarissa and myself. She's one year older than me and has always been the shining star of our family. Throughout my upbringing, my mom constantly compared me to her, pushing me to be like my older sister. It felt like a never-ending competition with Clarissa, from stacking blocks in kindergarten to vying for the prom queen title at prom. She consistently set high standards that I couldn't surpass. On the surface, she seemed better in every aspect. Better grades, being a state-level ice skater until middle school, and in high school, becoming the class president and a popular cheerleader. Everyone wanted to be her friend, and she even got accepted into an Ivy League college. Her first job after graduation was far superior to mine. Unfortunately, because my parents always boosted her ego and prioritized her, I found myself living in her shadow. I was just an average girl in school, and one incident that struck me was when I started taking cello lessons in middle school. But, as expected, Clarissa also joined in, and being the perfectionist she is, she outshone me. I eventually quit, and ever since, I have felt like I became invisible lost in her achievements. I won't lie, I couldn't help but feel jealous of her success. I hated being her sister, but I never hated her. Clarissa has always been like this, super focused on herself and making everything about her. But to be fair, it's not all her fault. Things have been this way in our family forever. At dinner, it has always been about Clarissa and what she's up to, It's like she's the center of attention all the time. In college, I chose to study literature, pursuing my own interests and passions. Now I work for a small publishing company where my income might not be extravagant, but it's enough to sustain my lifestyle. Clarissa had already moved out and got her own apartment. While I kept jumping back and forth between Nate's apartment and my parents' place, And it was a bit embarrassing for me as I didn't have my own place. However, I was focused on saving up money so that I could eventually get my own place too. When I first started dating Nate and shared how we met with Clarissa, she started bullying me for it. Oh, only a creep who lives in his mom's basement would hit on girls like that in Walmart. Clarissa, could you not be mean for once? He is a nice guy, and he is into coding, for starters. He treats me well. You will know if you try to get to know him. I decided to make the announcement of Nate's proposal over dinner, so I invited Clarissa for dinner at our house. Hey, Clarissa. Hey, Kat. Come over for dinner at the house today. Mom's making your favorite key lime pie for dessert, and I have a special announcement to make. Don't tell me you're pregnant. Mom and Dad would have to take care of two babies then. Come on, don't be such a meanie. 
Ha <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. I'll be there. When I made the announcement, everyone was happy for me and congratulated me. I told them we were getting married in two months and mom and dad couldn't stop talking about how happy I made them with the news. Clarissa also congratulated me, but I could sense some jealousy from her and I wasn't sure why. Is something wrong, Clarissa? Nothing really. I'm just shocked. Why would Nate marry you? I thought it was just a casual thing. He could have anyone he wanted. He's successful and handsome. Give me a break, Clarissa. It felt like maybe Clarissa didn't take the news so well because for the first time in our lives, she wasn't the center of attention. Everything wasn't about her for once. Perhaps she also didn't like the idea of me getting married before her. After all, Clarissa was still single and had trouble keeping relationships for more than three months. She was always the first to do things in our family, and maybe it bothered her that I was having a moment for myself with our parents. Then it was time to begin the wedding preparations, and right from the start, I made a grave mistake. Instead of choosing Clarissa as my maid of honor, I asked my best friend Haley to take on that role. I love my sister very much, but I never felt a strong connection with her. Her initial reaction to my engagement had already weirded me out, and she had been expressing doubts about the whole thing. I couldn't risk letting her have control over my wedding. Something told me she wouldn't do things right. When I told her that Haley would be my maid of honor, she didn't seem bothered at first. However, a couple of days later, mom wanted to talk to me. I heard you asked Clarissa to just be a bridesmaid and made Haley your maid of honor instead. Well, mom, you know, Clarissa and I have never been that close. She doesn't know me as well, and I don't want my wedding to be anything less than perfect. I'm sure Haley would do a better job. I don't know about that, but you hurt your sister. You two are supposed to be on the same team. Mom, I just have this feeling that Clarissa isn't in favor of this wedding. Maybe she wanted to get married first, and I fear she might try to sabotage it. She's your sister. Why would she do that? I was done with the conversation, and the decision had been made. With that settled, Nate and I began the wedding preparations. For the wedding venue, we chose a charming wedding courtyard, and we went ahead and booked the place. It felt like the perfect location for our special day. After finalizing the wedding venue, I had other important tasks lined up with my friends, including Clarissa, that needed to be taken care of. We started with shopping for my wedding dress. I had created a mood board to find the perfect dress that matched my vision, and after trying out various designers and visiting different stores for a week, I finally found the dress of my dreams. Haley, Clarissa, and my mom were with me during this special moment. The wedding gown was a gift from my parents, and it was priced at a whopping $3,000. Stepping out in a beautiful white, in bold drawer mermaid gown, I instantly knew it was the one for me. As the veil was placed on my head, my mom's eyes got all teary, and it was such an emotional moment. But leave it to Clarissa to ruin it. She just had to drop that nasty comment. Sure, the gown is gorgeous, but I'm sorry I have to be honest with you. You don't have the body for it. You look fat. Haley had to swoop in and remind me not to let Clarissa's negativity bring me down, so I brushed it off, kept my cool, and bought that dress anyway. Next, we moved on to look for the bridesmaids' dresses. We decided on a beautiful coral satin dress for all the bridesmaids. However, Clarissa, in her usual controlling nature, insisted that pink wasn't her color. It was frustrating because my wedding had a specific theme, and after much bickering, we compromised and chose the closest color to coral, which was salmon. Clarissa was just being problematic and selfish at this point. Counting all the times Clarissa tried to bring me down would take forever. Those two months leading up to the wedding were a roller coaster of stress. Cake tasting, flower picking, seating arrangements, it was all overwhelming. 
Thank goodness for Nate and Haley who were constantly supporting me and helping me out. She would constantly try to sabotage me or say hurtful things that made me question my decisions. She kept making snide remarks trying to show me that if it were her wedding, things would be perfect and she would do it way better. I wish she could just be happy for me instead of trying to overshadow my special moment. One week before the wedding, Clarissa had taken some time off work and moved in with us temporarily. My parents were out running errands when Nate asked if he could come over to share something important. It was just Clarissa and me at home and Nate had arrived, joining me in my bedroom. Nate handed me a little gift. Here's a little gift. My grandma would want you to have it. He handed me a box and as I opened it, I found a beautiful vintage necklace inside. Oh my God, Nate, is this for me? I couldn't be more honored. I wish I could have met your grandma in person. This is so sweet. I love you, baby. I love you too. The doorbell rang and I hurried downstairs to find the Amazon delivery guy waiting. I quickly signed for the package, taking it from him. As I made my way back up the stairs, I could hear muffled voices coming from my room. Curious, I tried to listen in without being noticed. I seriously couldn't believe it when a guy like you proposed to Kat. What do you mean? You're successful, making apps, and let's face it, you're way too good looking for someone like her. You're like out of her league. Clarissa, I think Kat is my dream girl. She's beautiful and passionate. This necklace would look better on my neck. And you know what would look better on yours? My arms instead of Kat's. Get off me. I barged into the room and it seemed like Nate had pushed Clarissa away from him. It's not what you think, Kat. I know, Nate. I heard everything. Clarissa, can you stop acting all crazy? Are you this desperate trying to throw yourself at my man? What's gotten into you? Try to act like an adult for once. We're not kids and this isn't some competition. You've spent your whole life living in the spotlight and now that I have it for once, you've gone all insane. News flash: the world doesn't revolve around you. I'm sorry, please don't tell mom and dad about this. They're going to hate me. Just get out of my sight. I'm disgusted by you right now. Clarissa left my room and Nate tried to comfort me. I decided not to tell mom and dad about the incident as I didn't want to create more drama. I was already stressed about the wedding and adding fuel to the fire wouldn't help. I didn't even want Clarissa at the wedding anymore. I confided in Haley and she agreed that it was best not to bring it up. Who knows what Clarissa might do next? But let me tell you, I was so mad at her. Who would stoop down that level and flirt with their sister's fiancé? That was some next level messed up stuff. She seriously needed some major help pulling off a stunt like that. I was just fuming with anger and disappointment at her. Like, why would she even go there? It was beyond me. But then, just three days before my wedding, I heard a knock on my door. Cat. I know my apology doesn't hold much value right now, but I'm really sorry for everything. Not just about the Nate situation, but for how I reacted to your wedding news and poked at you for the past two months. My jealousy got the better of me. You know, I haven't been in a stable relationship for a while and being the oldest sister, I wanted to be the one getting married first. Seeing all the attention you were getting made me feel so lonely. I realize now that Nate loves you for who you are and no one has ever seen me like that. I don't know what I was doing. I owe an apology to Nate too. I know we didn't start off on a great foot, but I really want your wedding to be perfect. You're my little baby sister after all. Oh, come here. I was taken aback by her words and surprisingly all the hurtful things she said and did started to fade away. I did not know what to say, so I went in for a hug, thinking it was a genuine moment of reconciliation. Little did I know she had something else in mind. We had a little bachelorette party at a cool club, followed by a rehearsal dinner the next night before the big day. 
I was totally shaken by how Clarissa was on her best behavior. Like, who is the new and improved version of her? It was almost like she was trying to make up for all the drama she had caused earlier. But hey, I wasn't complaining. I was just hoping she'd keep it together for the actual wedding, too. It was the day of the wedding and things were in full swing. Hairdressers, makeup artists were buzzing around. Everyone seemed to be in a panic. My cousins, who were part of my bridesmaid squad, were already at our place. Haley and Alex, my other friend and also bridesmaid, were there too, all dolled up in their pretty salmon dresses. All the attention was on me as I got my hair and makeup done. Clarissa complimented me on how beautiful I looked. When I put on the dress... My mom and grandma couldn't stop crying and I was just overwhelmed with emotions. We did a quick toast, but to be honest, I still had a major cold feet. Then came the first look with Nate and we both turned into a puddle of tears. After that, the photo frenzy began capturing all those moments before the moment. Walking down the aisle, holding my bouquet, I started the walk with my dad, followed by my awesome bridesmaids. The ceremony was beautiful, and finally, Nate and I were officially husband and wife. The evening was a blast with music, food, and endless chatter. Everything seemed to be going perfectly. Nate and I were mingling with the guests. We were on cloud nine, taking care of the guests and eagerly waiting for our wedding cake to be brought in. But then, out of freaking nowhere, I spotted a familiar face in the crowd. Max, my ex-boyfriend from college. What the actual hell was he doing here? I was shaken to my core when I saw Clarissa holding Max's hand as they swaggered over to me. Like, what on earth is happening right now? This was some next-level drama I did not sign up for. Max, what are you doing here? Max was clearly wasted and all those memories of our college days came rushing back. Ugh, he was into partying, drugs and just being a total mess. No wonder we broke up. Congratulations, kitty cat. Who invited you? Seriously? He's my plus one. Are you kidding me? Why would you do this? Oh my God, Clarissa, you're driving me insane. Who's this dude? Well, Kitty Cat and I share some history together. They sure do. My blood was boiling with fury. I had never hated Clarissa more than at that moment. I couldn't believe she would do something so selfish and disrespectful. I felt terrible for Nate. He looked totally weirded out by Max's presence, and who wouldn't be? But just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, disaster struck. The freaking champagne glass was hit with a silver spoon and that dreaded ting, ting, ting sound filled the air. It was time for the speeches. And of course, Clarissa, not missing the opportunity to steal the spotlight, dropped Max's hand and rushed to the front, snatching the microphone from Haley. I couldn't even believe my eyes at that point. This was supposed to be the happiest day of my life and she was turning it into a total nightmare. I didn't know whether to scream, cry, or do both. I just wanted this whole circus to end. All right, all right, everybody, gather around. Let's have some fun. So here we are at Kat's wedding. And let me just say, it's been a roller coaster of emotions for me. Let's talk about the groom, Nate, over here. You know, Nate, you're supposed to be the groom. But honestly, I've seen more enthusiasm from a sloth on a lazy Sunday afternoon. I mean... I get it, one wouldn't be as stoked to marry my sister, but Nate, how hard is it to keep up appearances? Well, let us move on to the bride over here, Kat. What can I say about her? She is a nobody. She has always tried to be me. I mean, I would not even know how it feels to be her, poor thing. But come on, let's be real. I'm the prettier and smarter sister. That's why we have Max here, Kat's ex-boyfriend, as my plus one. I wouldn't be surprised if Nate hits on me sometime later. Haley quickly took the mic away from Clarissa, trying to divert the guest's attention by announcing that the cake had arrived. 
My tears were streaming down my face and I just couldn't go on with the evening. Nate was being super supportive, trying to comfort me while all this drama unfolded. And just when they brought out the cake, Clarissa went and pushed it like a total wrecking ball and it fell flat on the floor. I couldn't contain my anger anymore and it all just spilled out. Just leave, Clarissa. I don't want you here. I don't want to see your face ever again. My voice was shaking with frustration and hurt, and I knew I should have been stronger, but I was going through a mental breakdown. Clarissa looked stunned, and for a moment, her drunken bravado faded away. It was clear that my words had hit her hard, and I could see a flicker of remorse in her eyes, but it was too late. The damage was done, and I couldn't take back what I had said. The pain and anger were still there, bubbling inside me like a volcano. Haley, Alex, can you please escort Clarissa out of here? And so they did. With Clarissa gone, Nate took over the mic. Hey everyone, I just want to thank you all for being here and celebrating this special day with us. I know things got a bit heated, but let's not let that overshadow the evening that lies ahead of us. And to my wife, Kat, I love you with all my heart and I promise to be there for you to support you and to love you unconditionally through all the ups and downs of life. Today might not have gone exactly as we planned, but it's a reminder that life is unpredictable and we have to cherish every moment. After the wedding, Nate and I had an amazing honeymoon in Italy, and it was the perfect way to unwind and enjoy each other's company. Living our best life, exploring the sights and devouring the delish Italian food, but the whole drama with Clarissa at the wedding still had me feeling down. I moved my staff to Nate's place, but Clarissa was MIA. No calls, no texts, nada. My parents are mad at me for standing up to her and throwing her out of my wedding. Honestly, I had enough of Clarissa's toxic energy. Cutting her out of my life was the ultimate power move. I mean, how could she be so heartless? No apologies, nothing. No way was I going to forgive her for that mess. As for my parents, they better wake up and see that Clarissa's the one stirring up trouble. She needs to take responsibility for her actions. A week went by since we were back from Italy and still nothing from the family. I'm standing tall and holding my ground. If they finally get it and show me some love, I'll consider talking things out. Until then, I'm focusing on my new life with Nate. Hi, how are you all? I'm Brenda. I'm currently 29 and will be 30 in two months. I have recently gotten out of a horrible experience related to my husband and his mother. I swear, I used to think that marriage is not that difficult to handle. But boy, was I wrong. Yes, I'm a strong girl since I managed. When I was unmarried, I had my life pretty well and sorted. I had a job as an assistant vet. My life was surrounded by pets and to be honest, I loved being around them. I loved adventure. I had an old bike belonging to my father. I often took it out for a spin. If my dad didn't have much sentiment towards it, I would have taken it for myself. My dad raised me single-handedly and never made me feel like I didn't have a mom. He is an excellent father and I'm really lucky to have him. I moved to Chicago where I got a job as an assistant caregiver to a veterinary clinic. It started very smoothly and I was picking on the process fast. I met John very unexpectedly. I was very late once and had to take a cab. The cab driver was handsomely single. He is the epitome of a charming boy next door trope. He had some bomb ass features, especially his hair. It looked so soft and silky. He was my type. He was also too smooth with his words. So, ma'am, where to? His smile was radiant and he gave me a cheeky smirk now and then. Sometimes he would lock eyes with me through his mirror. I would blush, but I didn't give any unnecessary signs. What's your name, if you don't mind telling me? Why do you want to know that? 
Want to take me out or something? <laughs> I mean, I don't mind if you don't. Winks. Please, you are not my type. Ouch, that hurt. Well, how about being friends? <laughs> Depends on how you are treating a lady. I'm just messing around. Okay then, deal. Do you like Italian? I have a great restaurant in my area. You would love it, I guarantee. Are you serious about taking me out? Well, I love Italian. Sounds great. That day, I was highly energetic at work. My colleagues were very amazed by my grand gestures. There was usually this one dog that annoyed me a lot, but I managed to keep my calm even in that situation. Pauline, my go-to buddy, came skipping towards me. She then gripped my shoulders tightly and looked at me with a cheeky grin. Girl, what's going on? Am I missing anything? Are you hiding something from me? Jesus, get a grip. You scared the shit out of me. Everything's good. I'm just really happy. Yeah, sure. Is that the reason why you've been spacing out during the case discussion today? What's the source? Ah, uh, well, I met a really cute cab driver today. His name is John. He offered to treat me to an Italian restaurant today. Say what now? A cab driver? Bro? Now, now, don't judge. I mean, is he that cute? Yes, he is. If I get a snap of him, I'll send it to you. But you better not hit on him. He's mine. <laughs> Oh, please, I have eyes on someone else. He's pretty cute, too. Winks. That evening, I was picked by John. He was smelling nice and looked so good. I was nervous and fidgety. I mean, it is my first time trying to find the man. He took me to a very beautiful place by a small lake. It was a cozy place and maybe not that posh, but the food was amazing. John's deep brown eyes, framed by thick, expressive eyebrows, are his most captivating feature. They are warm and inviting, radiating kindness and sincerity. When he smiles, his eyes light up, revealing a genuine and infectious joy that draws people towards him. Gosh, it was hard to fall for that smile. We stuffed ourselves with pasta and wine and ice cream. A wonderful evening. He gave me another offer. He said he would make me meet his mother since she would like me a lot. The way things were moving too fast should have been a dead giveaway that this all was a red flag. So, you live with your dad? Not. Dad stays with my uncle in Michigan. He got this house long back for themselves, but then mom left and he and I started to live. But you know, my dad's not a fan of staying in one place for long. He loves traveling. He owns a beautiful bike. It's old and all, but it's still sturdy to go on. He visits me sometimes, like currently he's here right now. He would leave in a week. Wow, your dad sounds like a rock star, like a total biker badass. Would he even like me? <laughs> that, again, depends on how you'd approach him. After all, he is the type of father who protects their daughter from a freaking fly so. And he is wary of men around me. The last time I brought a guy to my place, he scared him off just from the door. That was some scene, I swear. The guy practically pissed his pants off. Well then, how about we bet on it again? I mean, I won this time. You like the place and the food and me? So... Let's see if your dad likes me too. I put a bet on $20. I am winning the 20. You will not be able to win. I tell you, he is too difficult to impress. Oh, Brenda, you just don't know me yet. I am smooth Mr. Cool. I will impress your dad so hard, he would be bound to get us married. Just watch me. Okay, Mr. Confident. We quaked with laughter. I mean, I thought he was joking, but man, he was dead serious. When I returned home late, my dad was sitting right there looking very concerned. Yes, young lady, where were you? I mean, it is midnight. Oh, dad, um, well, I was working overtime. 
There were a lot of clients and emergencies, so I had to stay back. I wasn't born yesterday, Brenda. Who is the man? Dad? There was no man. Please, you are overthinking. I was just with Pauline. She was... I called Pauline. She said you were outside with a friend. Who was it? Ugh, okay, fine. He was just a friend, an old friend. He wanted to go out with me to chill, so I said yes, that's all. And how come I've never heard of this friend before? And why didn't you bother telling or at least calling me once? You know I'm worried about you, Bren. Sorry, Dad, I am. I would keep this in mind. He's a cab driver and he is a very sweet person, so please, you can relax. Why a cab driver? Ugh, all right, fine. Just next time, please inform your father. The next day at work, I jumped at Pauline. She was very startled at first, but then realized why I did that. Girl, why the hell did you tell my dad about John? Bruh, chill. I just said you were out with a friend and why wouldn't I? What if that twat murdered you and dumped you somewhere? Oh, come on. He was so adorable and such a gentleman. I'll be meeting his mother soon and... and... Mother? Hell no. You're going too fast. The first date doesn't determine anything. He could be a closet perv for all you know. You want to freaking bet on it? You will lose since you're such an amazing judge of character. Don't even try. We exchanged numbers. He used to call me more than text. He'd say that he loved hearing my voice. He even gave me a proposal to visit his house, telling me that his mother was so eager to meet me. I was kind of scared because I was thinking about Pauline's words and I felt that maybe I was going too fast. I wanted to take it slow and wanted to see how things worked with him first. I told him to keep seeing each other for the time being before his mom got involved. John was persistent, but gradually understood. We just got to know each other. And as much as I love hanging out with you, I'm still new to this and I want to get to know you properly first. I mean, you are adorable and I like you, but I want to like you more, you see? Okay, I get it. And I'm sorry. I don't know why, but I've never been this excited in my life. It's always fun to have you around. You know what? Me too. And I'm glad to have met you. I'm an outgoing girl, but not many guys catch my eye that often. So all of this is kind of new to me too. Aha. So you're saying that I managed to catch your attention? Are you admitting the fact that I'm different from the other guys you've met? Yes, of course. Jesus, saying it out loud makes it much more embarrassing than keeping it in my head. You are the only guy, I think, with whom I can be like myself. And I too feel the same, Brenda. We started officially dating after two months of hanging out. He invited me to a baseball match. His friend was playing as a debutante in the team and he requested both of us to pay a visit. John was sitting very close to me. He was making it so obvious that he was into me. When I locked eyes with him, he leaned in and planted a soft kiss. That was it. The spark to a forest fire. I was swooning at his charm. He had many friends. He would introduce me to them and we would drink together and come home late. John would always escort me safely to my place. My dad was always keeping an eye on him every time he dropped me off. The last time he did, my dad stopped and told him to pay a visit for some dinner. Just the three of us. Well, John already made his way to my dad's heart. It is a rare occurrence that my dad invites anyone over to his place. I bet he's eager to win his $20, lol. My dad and I arranged a nice steak party for John. We had fish, fries, a little bit of rice and Japanese curry. To wash it all down, we had Chicago's finest red wine. It was a full feast, like a lot for just three people. I wore my prettiest dress. It was his favorite color, violet. When he arrived, he was wearing a freaking tuxedo. He was looking so handsome, though. The three of us made proper acquaintances before we sat down to have our dinner. 
So, John, how long have you been in Chicago? Three years, sir. I know the city like the back of my hand. Oh, really now? Impressive. And you are a cab driver? <coughs> yes, sir. Babe, talk about the time when you hitchhiked a creepy man. The one which was late at night? My dad loves these kinds of stories. Babe? No, no, Brenda, not yet. Not now. Dad, we're dating, I told you. Yes, I know, but I believe in family decorum. This is not yet welcome in my house. Brenda, your father's right. His house, his rules. You can always call me babe and darling, but not here, okay? That is a good man right there. Now, John, tell me about the story of the creepy man Brenda was talking about. After dinner, when John was about to leave. Well, babe, I guess I owe you $20, right? Oh, nah, I don't need it. I'm just glad I could prove that I'm a very suave gentleman. Look at you, so full of yourself. <laughs> Bet you feel more cocky than ever. I love you, you know? I love you too. It has been a few months since John requested me to finally meet his mother. Now, I thought this was the proper time to do so. I remember how I stood nervously outside the door preparing myself to meet John's mother for the first time. A wave of anticipation washed over me. John had spoken so highly of his mother, Jackie, and I wanted nothing more than to make a good impression in front of her. I took a deep breath and knocked on the door, my heart pounding with every passing second. The door swung open, revealing a woman with a warm smile and kind eyes. She welcomed me inside with open arms and I couldn't help but feel a glimmer of relief. It seemed like everything was going well and I hoped this meeting would be the beginning of a beautiful relationship between us. Throughout the evening, Jackie showed genuine interest in getting to know me. She asked about my family, my hobbies and my aspirations. I eagerly shared my stories, hoping to connect with her on a deeper level. As the night progressed, I started to feel more comfortable in her presence, cherishing the chance to bond with John's mother. But amidst the pleasant conversation and laughter, I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was off. Jackie's smile, though warm, seemed forced at times, and her gaze occasionally flickered with an unidentifiable emotion. I couldn't help but wonder what lay behind those eyes. As dinner came to an end, Jackie excused herself from the table, leaving John and me alone for a moment. I turned to John, my eyes filled with curiosity and concern. Do you think your mother likes me? There's something off about everything, and I can't quite put my finger on it. He excused himself too. After 20 minutes of sitting in absolute silence, they both came in with a plate of desserts. You know, Brenda, it has been a long time since I met someone as wonderful as you. My son is extremely lucky to have found you. He always had an eye for the good stuff. I mean, I won't deny it. He does find his way into people's hearts. He gets me too. You have raised your son well. So, have you guys thought of marriage yet? Did my boy pop the question? I choked so hard on my cupcake. It took me a while to get it out of my windpipe. John glared at his mother. I don't know whether that was out of anger or embarrassment. What? What? Did I say something wrong? I thought he already did it. Baby, were you going to propose to me? <laughs> <sighs> Thanks, Mom. It was true that John wanted to propose, and when we went to our next date, he popped the question. I said yes, because I was charmed by this man. The wedding was simple and calm. The reception took place in a small hotel because we didn't want John to waste too much money on these things. I was glad enough to get him as my husband. Jackie was present throughout, but she was silent. That stone-cold expression returned on her face. Her mind was probably bubbling with thoughts that I would never know. She seemed very half-hearted. I mean, I would have empathized with her if she was feeling sad that her son has grown up and was getting married. 
but I couldn't even empathize with her after the stunt she pulled off. John moved in with me to my house. My dad already headed back to my uncle's. He said he would visit soon. John and I more or less settled down well. We made some changes together. John turned our bedroom into his dream room. I don't mind much because I'm not picky about decor. I got to arrange the living room and a bit of the kitchen. Pauline visited us shortly after getting married. She was extremely ill, so she couldn't come before. It was nice to have her and John get to know each other. Everything felt perfect until things started missing from my house. What do you mean, missing? First, it started with my accessories, then my favorite jacket. That was a costly one, too. Small things are disappearing now and then. Okay, that's weird. Did you talk to John about this? I did. He kept saying, I probably misplaced it. I mean, help me look for it, but he wasn't too keen. Should I come over and help you out? I am your good luck charm after all. <laughs> it's all right. I'll deal with it just fine. I probably did misplace it. After all, I cleaned the whole freaking closet. This still didn't give me much assurance as things kept disappearing into thin air. I would often think about it at my workplace. This went on for a year, especially when John and I went on our honeymoon. I returned to a trashed house, like someone entered and they made a huge mess. There were beer bottles, unwashed dishes and smelly clothes. I thought it was my dad since he is the only one with spare keys, but when I called him, he said that he was still at my uncle's. I didn't fill in any details because I didn't want him to get worried. I thought maybe John and I could somehow solve this issue. One day, I finished work early. At the door, when I was taking out my keys, I was somewhat feeling uneasy, like a feeling of danger washed over me. I put the keys in, but the door was not fully locked. I went inside, tiptoed, not making a single sound. It was another house intrusion. I could hear sounds from the bedroom. I took hold of an umbrella that was kept at the corner and slowly made my way to the sound. I peeked through the corner, and to my astonishment, it was Jackie. She was trashing my entire closet, even wearing my favorite jacket. The moment a yelp of protest came out of my mouth, she turned towards me. There you are, the woman who bewitched my son. Do you think you can get away with this? What on earth? How the hell did you get in here? She suddenly lunged at me while yelling. This is my son's house, not yours, you filthy vermin. These are all mine, my things. You don't even deserve this life. The first time I saw those eyes, I saw nothing but filth. She grabbed my hair tightly. I was so scared and hurt. My hands automatically lifted themselves. The umbrella came down on her head. It was not a massive blow, thank goodness, but enough to knock her out. I called the cops and John. Jackie confessed to her misguided intentions, tearfully admitting that her actions stemmed from a deep-seated fear of losing her son. She apologized profusely, recognizing the pain she had caused in our relationship and the violation of our privacy. Her love for John had driven her to desperate measures but she now understood the gravity of her actions. She was okay and handcuffed. I showed her and the cops my property papers as proof that I was not the crazy one there. The cops found Jackie guilty of intrusion and theft. They also gave me a warning to use weapons carefully on people. John sighed, his face filled with a mix of regret and sadness. Brenda, it's complicated. Jackie has always been overprotective and she couldn't let go of me when we got married. She had this misguided belief that she needed to protect me at all costs, even if it meant crossing boundaries. And you? Are you a child, John? Don't you have any sense of right and wrong? I'm sorry, Brenda. I didn't think this would go that far. The fact that your mother was so sweet and sugar is sickening. 
Her real intentions were hidden by that pretty smile of hers. Ugh, I can't take this anymore. While forgiveness wasn't immediate, I recognized that Jackie's remorse and John's stupidity were genuine. We understood that her love for her son had clouded her judgment, and we hoped that with time and healing, we could rebuild the trust that had been shattered. In the following months, we took steps to ensure our home security and protect our privacy. We changed the locks, implemented a security system, and established clear boundaries with Jackie. I was very much troubled and heartbroken by John's betrayal. I needed some space. I told him that we need to split for a while and that I need to think again with a clear head. John was understanding enough to lend me that. I gave him no access to my place, at least for the time being. My dad came and temporarily moved in till things were less tense. Jackie was in jail for a while. She would be released soon. She too was not allowed to access my life. Well, currently, I'm still healing. Things will get better eventually. John has to prove more than he should if he wants to get back in my life. My name's Amanda. I'm 28 years old. My family owns a confectionery business in Seattle, and I've been helping them out ever since I was in my early teens. My parents left the business to me and my sister to run since they were getting old and wanted to retire. It was a fun business to work in, plus my family accommodated me in a nice place to live right above the shop. I was growing up and I wanted to be independent. Every morning at 8 a.m., our shop opens and we welcome customers with a warm aroma of freshly brewed coffee and soft, creamy delectables. Chloe, my sister, was the type of person who would not help in any contribution, but be present whenever an event took place, like she would show up as if she owned the thing or something. Our parents were really tired of her not being serious and fooling around with the expenses. Even if they wanted a break, they had to come twice a week to see if everything was done smoothly. She was such a spoil sport. I disliked her. It had always been a tumultuous journey being Chloe's younger sister. I vividly remember those early years filled with constant bickering and petty arguments. Chloe had a way of making me feel like I was living in her shadow always overshadowed by her accomplishments and dreams. As we grew older, the gap between us seemed to widen and our differences only multiplied. Despite our constant clashes, I yearned for a strong bond with my sister. I desperately wanted her to see me as more than just her little sister, someone she could confide in and trust. However, Every time I thought we were making progress, something would come along to remind me of the deep-rooted strain between us. Chloe, please don't mess with my toys. Mom said I need to keep them safe. Oh, come on, Amanda. They're just boring old toys. Let's have some fun. They're not boring, and I don't want them ruined. You always break things. I do not. Ugh, you're just no fun. Chloe and I were fighting over the toy, and we both stopped pulling it in the opposite direction. The force was too much to bear, so it ended up ripping apart from the middle. See what you did? Now Mom will be so mad. Oops, my bad. But who cares? Jesus, you're such a goody two-shoes. Why would you always have to be so mean all the time, Chloe? I'm not mean, I'm just having fun. You should try it sometimes. There's a difference between having fun and being destructive. Chloe, I wish you'd understand that. You're always so perfect, little Miss Perfect. It's annoying. I'm not. I just don't want to get into trouble all the time. Oh, you're such a scared cat. You should think about others too, not just yourself. What if you broke something that I loved? Whatever. I'll find someone else to play with. Chloe storms off, leaving me feeling hurt and upset. This was always the case between me and her. She just couldn't stand me. It became worse as we grew up. It started with taking my things to bully me in school. She often tossed my bag or tiffin box. Her attitude only grew worse. My constant attempt of establishing something decent kept failing. 
One such incident left an indelible mark on my heart, and was when she stole away my fiance from me. Our relationship was blossoming into something beautiful, but as soon as Chloe heard about Jacob, her demeanor changed. I could sense her jealousy as she couldn't bear the thought of me finding happiness in someone else's arms. It wasn't long before Chloe started putting seeds of doubt in Jacob's mind about our relationship. She would whisper poison into his ear, painting me as someone unworthy of his love and affection. The more she tried to create rifts between us, the more I felt torn between my love for Jacob and my desire to salvage any semblance of sisterly connection with Chloe. Why would you ever do something like that? What have I ever done to you to deserve this? You, you always did this. Why? Just why? Oh, little sis, about to cry again. Jacob was dating a sore loser until now. I'll always be the showstopper in your life, Amanda. You can't ever have the good things in life. Besides, have you seen yourself in the mirror? That was my relationship. You had no right to take it away from me. I have given you all the things you desired, all my toys, my friends, my room, my freaking car. You took them all and you are still not content. You want my fiancé too? Oh, will you stop yapping? Your voice is hella annoying, man. Look, Missy, I did you a favor. That guy was never meant to be with you anyway. I mean, if he cheats on you that fast, might as well call it quits. I remember how it all started through a freaking dating app. I had my 26th birthday and my friends were encouraging me to start an account and search for potential mates. At first, I was laughing about it, telling them that dating apps are absolute trash and only creeps would want to be your soulmates. But every time I finished my shift at work and come home feeling a bit lonely and tired, I couldn't help but think about the possibility that maybe it might be a great idea to check out at least once. One evening, as I sat in my cozy apartment, I decided to give the world of dating apps a try, hoping to find someone to explore this city with. Little did I know that my life was about to change from the most beautiful to the worst way ever. At first, I was getting used to the interface, but then slowly and surely, I was all up and going. I scrolled through the app, swiping left and right, but none of the profiles really caught my attention until I stumbled upon Jacob's. His profile picture showed a warm smile that instantly melted my heart, and his bio was filled with humor and kindness. Without hesitation, I swiped right, hoping he'd do the same. A few days passed, and just when I was beginning to lose hope, I received a notification that made my heart skip a beat. It was a match. Jacob had swiped right, too. Hey there, Amanda. How's it going? Kind of new to this app, so please bear with me. (laughs) Oh, really? Me too. I just downloaded a few days back. It's so strange how people get matched here. I'm just glad it's you. I really liked your bio and was keen to get to know you. To be honest, I had half expectations that we would match. Oh, come on. Don't underestimate yourself so much. Your profile was very striking too, especially where you added only cat people. I unfortunately have a dog. I hope it won't come in the way. (laughs) We engaged in a back and forth conversation, sharing bits and pieces of our lives, hobbies and interests. Wow, your family runs a bakery. That is so freaking cool. I bet the menu is tasty as hell. You're always welcome to try. (laughs) As the conversation progresses, we discovered shared interests and a sense of humor. I don't know why when people find out I'm an engineer, they would ask me, how many bridges have I built? Like it has happened so many times, it does not feel like a joke anymore. Really? I didn't know that was a thing. Engineering is such a respectful job. You must be really busy. True. It's a pretty decent job with pretty decent pay, but not as exciting as yours, though. I would love to wake up every day to freshly baked pastries. Oh, my God. As we continued to chat, Jacob suggested that we meet in person. 
I felt nervous but excited at the same time. He told me he would love to visit our bakery. He also added if I could manage to save him some glazed donuts since he loves them a lot. I remember him walking into our shop searching for my face at the counter and when our eyes finally met, it felt like time had stopped. We greeted each other with a warm side hug and all my nerves vanished in an instant. I was glad he wasn't catfishing. He looked exactly like his picture, rather much attractive up front. My parents were kind of startled by this gesture. They didn't expect that I would be the one making the move. They welcomed Jacob to spend some time with them after work. Either it was them being overprotective or them being really caring. They decided to stay the whole time when Jacob was present. It was more like a group date, to be honest. The next time we met, we explored the city together, trying out new restaurants, attending concerts, and simply enjoying each other's company. With every passing day, our connection grew stronger, and it became evident that we had found something truly special. Chloe noticed, but she was too full of herself to appreciate anything. Whenever she used to see me with Jacob, she would scream, bad choice, or ew, gross, take it someplace else. She always had a habit of publicly demeaning me and making fun of me. One day, I got old juju on her by confronting her antics. Chloe, like, can you not shut the hell up? Do you always have to make such a scene? What? I was just saying the truth. You guys were drooling at each other like some 90s kids drooling at their first candy. If you want to get finicky, you know, love hotels are always available. The bakery isn't your honeymoon. And since when did you care about the bakery, huh? Who was the one spending all the hard-earned expenses on Jimmy Choo's and Chanel? Like, you know damn well that shit's pricey, and still, you are so shameless. You are not my mother, little brat. I can do whatever I want. It's not just your shop. I have equal rights to this property. Piss off, sociopath. Jesus, mom should have left you somewhere. Our parents were so tired of us fighting constantly. They tried to separate us from a very early age, but somehow we always managed to piss each other off. There were times she and I would have fist fights. I know how toxic this sounds, but her behavior was causing a lot of hindrance in our mental health. I started to hate her, but I also felt bad that a chance of potential sisterhood was never happening. To keep my mind off things, I kept my focus on my relationship with Jacob. He owned a really good house. I mean, he was an established engineer. He had successful projects and his portfolio was damn clean. When he invited me to his place, I was really scared. I didn't know how his parents would react to me. I mean, their son is extremely talented and I'm just plain old me running my family business with no talent of my own whatsoever. But it didn't go as bad as I thought it to be. His parents arranged a feast, which I felt was really unnecessary because I eat so little. I could barely stuff my face with food. They were having a conversation while I was trying to keep up with them. More or less, it was a great day. Things started to take a weird turn when Chloe started to seduce Jacob. At first, it started with subtly, like, light touches on his shoulders or stroking his back gently whenever she got the chance. This happened for a year. Jacob seemed not to mind or feel bothered by this at all, which should have been a red flag. But I thought he was just being oblivious. I mean, he freaking proposed to me. I felt my heart soar as he got down on one knee and asked me to be his partner for life. Through tears of joy, I said yes, feeling an overwhelming rush of happiness and gratitude. I so knew I didn't do the right thing. Don't you think you guys are rushing into the thing a bit? Like, he's not running anywhere. She was sitting at the back of the office of the shop eating a freshly baked macaroon. You were not supposed to eat that, Chloe. That was a fresh batch. Oh, no one will notice. We make plenty of batches every day. Oh, really? Do you even know how difficult it is to make macarons? Have you ever tried baking one? Oh, so you want to lecture me now? Do you really think people take you seriously? Like, if you do, you are mad, delusional. 
I'm not here to argue with you. I'm just here to remind you that we can't have fresh batches. That is not professional. If you really feel like you have the caliber to run this shop, then I think it's time you act like one. Chloe aggressively stood up. The table rumbled as she came up towards me and stood face to face with me. Stop talking like you are my father, you runt. Know your place. You are nothing but a sad little puppy who's always looked down upon. First from our parents and now Jacob. I froze. I didn't know what else to say. I just silently went away from the scene. I cried a lot in the bathroom that day. It didn't stop there. Things were going in a certain way, but the arrogance of Chloe increased, and now she became even more desperate. She wanted to tag along everywhere we went. She would call Jacob her best brother-in-law, but then proceed to be extremely handsy with him. I was feeling uncomfortable. I tried my best to have a conversation with Jacob, but she would always interrupt. I wouldn't lie, but Chloe was way more attractive than I was. She would wear dresses and doll herself up while I preferred light makeup and baggy clothes. Things started to get weirder when Jacob was invited to a work party. It was celebrated on a personal yacht. I was getting hella insecure. If I knew how posh his lifestyle was, I would have thought about not going with him. I was a very simple girl and a gala life was not mine, but definitely a thing for Chloe. Weirdly, she was invited. Like, I was the freaking fiancé, but he evidently enjoyed Chloe's company more. He introduced me and Chloe to his friends. I was getting really conscious, but Chloe was super confident. After a small interaction, I went to the bar counter and started to drink impulsively. A few shots later, when I was not able to stand anymore, I tripped two steps backwards and collided with someone. I turned around to see a tall man wearing a black suit and a white tie. He was talking to another woman with a drink in his hand. Whoa, lady, are you okay? Um, um, I'm really sorry. I didn't see you there. I'm just a bit buzzed. I'll be okay. Are you sure? We can provide some lime juice if you want. It will help you with that buzzing head of yours. That, that would be really nice, actually. I think I overdid it. He took me to one of the private compartments and made me sit. After five minutes, a glass of fresh lime juice arrived and was given to me. His name was Michael. He ordered another whiskey for himself. While we waited, he struck up a conversation with me, and to my surprise, I found Michael to be genuinely kind and easy to talk to. We laughed and shared stories and discovered common interests. As the night progressed, we continued to enjoy each other's company, and he made sure I felt included and cared for. It was as if we had known each other for ages, and the connection we had was unexpected but undeniable. As the party came to a close, Jacob called me on the phone asking where I was, so I quickly excused myself from Michael and left. He requested me to stay in touch with him, so I gave him my number. He smiled. He really liked my company and wanted to continue the conversation further. Where the hell were you? I was looking for you everywhere. At the restroom? Sorry, I was really drunk and I wanted to throw up. Why can't you take some responsibility? You know this is my office party. If people found out who you are to me, then it would have been so embarrassing. Thanks to Chloe, she maintained her composure pretty well throughout. My colleagues absolutely loved her. I was silent the whole time in the car. I know I messed up. I was so busy talking to Michael. Wait, should I tell him about Michael? But what if he gets angry? I won't be able to deal with it. Throughout the ride, I could see Chloe's satisfactory smirk. She was always happy whenever I was miserable. I never thought that my life could take such a painful turn. It was a sunny afternoon and I decided to surprise Jacob with a visit to his place and apologize for all the things I had done at his party. As I approached his front door, my heart was filled with love and excitement, eager to see the man I thought was my husband. But, as I stepped closer, I heard hushed voices coming from inside. At first I dismissed it as maybe Jacob talking to a friend or his parents. 
But something inside me couldn't shake the feeling of unease. Ignoring the nagging doubt, I opened the door, hoping for a warm welcome. To my horror, the sight that greeted me was like a punch to the gut. There, in the living room, I saw Jacob and Chloe, my own sister, locked in a passionate embrace. It felt like the world stood still for a moment as I processed the heartbreaking scene before me. The shock turned into disbelief and then into an overwhelming surge of pain and betrayal. I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. I wanted to scream, to confront them, but my voice failed me and I felt paralyzed. Finally, finding my voice, I managed to choke out their names and they quickly pulled away from each other. Chloe looked angry and Jacob attempted to explain, but the words fell on deaf ears. The betrayal was too much to bear and I said what I had to and fled from the apartment, tears streaming down my face. Hey, hey, Amanda, where are you? What happened? I called Michael, unable to process the entire situation. Can I please come over? Like, please, I can't. I feel like I'm going to faint. Oh shit, wait, tell me where you are. I'm coming to pick you up. I had secretly kept contact with him because I felt really nice talking to him. He became my very good friend, even if it was a momentary experience. I knew that he would be the one who would be helping me. After that scenario, I never faced them ever again. I told my dad to take over the shop while I took a break. My relationship with Michael became really strong and he took great care of me. Evidently, Chloe didn't come back to the shop and she moved in with Jacob. They were really happy with me gone from their lives. Michael and I tried to rebuild our friendship. We would go out and spend time together. Wait, you are the boss. What? Why didn't you tell me before? Because people get wary, so I didn't want to scare you away. <laughs> oh my God, Jacob would, he would... Damn! What's going on in that head of yours? Actually, I just am waiting for the right time. I feel like we'll be meeting them soon. I had a detailed discussion with my parents about Chloe. They were very disappointed and disgusted with her behavior. They never thought she would reach that extent, so it was decided I would be in charge of the shop. Meanwhile, me and Michael started dating. It has been eight months. His birthday was coming, so I wanted to buy him something. We thought of going to a supermarket to get him a nice pair of jeans and a shirt. He was shy at first, but agreed later on. We were roaming the streets and looking for a good shop when suddenly I saw two very familiar faces in the distance. It was Chloe and Jacob. They seemed to be arguing about something. As we approached, Chloe looked at us mockingly. Oh, isn't it the dear little sister? Oh, and I see you've found yourself a protege. Perfect for you. Uh, Chloe? So, who is this broke-ass boyfriend? Another fish from your dating app? Man, you do have bad choices. Jeez. So, what story did you cook up to him to get his attention? Chloe, please, shh. What? Hello, Jacob. Good seeing you here. He... Hey, boss, um, I, uh, well, wait, boss? Yes, and this broke-ass man is my soon-to-be husband. We are engaged. Well, I hope you guys are really happy together. Thanks a lot, Jacob. We left them in awe and shock. It was so satisfactory. My parents demanded Chloe never come back to the shop if she didn't fix her attitude. Jacob, on the other hand, was always kept on edge. Michael gave him subtle threats of firing him just to play with his feeble emotion. It was good riddance. I could finally be serious about the shop. Michael was a huge support and I was so happy to ever have met him.